In this guide, I'll be covering everything you need to know about Kazuha, the newest character in Genshin Impact Patch 1.6. I've been testing him non-stop since his release, and I'll be covering everything you need to know about Kazuha, including his playstyle, why you might want to use him over other options, his weapons, artifacts, and teams. I know exactly where he belongs to, so make sure you stick around for that. If you're new here, hello, I'm Hushings. I check at the game, so I compensate with knowledge. Subscribe for knowledge! I analyze characters before and after release, and if you're feeling particularly good, please smash that like button. I appreciate it very, very much. Timestamps are below, and if I find anything new afterwards, I will update them in the description, so check that out as well. The flashiest thing Kazuha can do has to be his double jump into an animal infused plunge attack. There are few things going on here so let's take a closer look. You can use his skill on the ground or in the air which is really fun to do. You can also hold the skill which does more damage but has a slightly longer cooldown. This sucks in enemies around as well and when you are in the air you can use a special plunge attack which does animal damage and he generates a vortex that clumps up enemies really well for a short time. If you swirled an element when you're using his skill, his ascension 1 passive will trigger and deal some extra damage off the swirled element when Kazuha lands. So make sure you're applying and swirling elements when you do this. Not just for the extra damage though, because swirling elements also procs his A4 passive, which gives his teammates of the matching element he swirled extra elemental damage bonus for 8 seconds. I know the text is a little bit confusing here, but trust me, it that's how it works. So if you swirled pyro, your pyro teammates get a buff and this buff scales with Kazuha's own elemental mastery. He also ascends with EM, so building a lot of it will be relatively easy. But before we get into his build, we have to talk about his ult, which is insanely good in both damage and utility. When you use his ult, he slashes in front of him, then creates this beautiful animal field around him, and you can see these maple leaves too. The details are so pretty. The color of the field also changes depending on which element it is infused with, and it does extra damage of that element, kinda like Venti and Sucrose, and it procs every 2 seconds dealing more damage over time. But something you might not be thinking about with his ult is how it interacts with his A4 passive. Because you are constantly swirling elements, you are also refreshing his A4 passive constantly. You can maintain 100% uptime on his damage buff if you can ult on cooldown or at least chain his E and ult properly and swirl every so often. But being able to ult on cooldown is really nice for this reason. If you've gotten Kazuha already, congratulations! If you are going to pull for him, comment Kazuha come home and I'll manifest Kazuha for you. If you are lucky enough to get some constellations, C1 is pretty nice, decreasing Kazuha's skill cooldown and resetting the cooldown entirely after using his ult, you can squeeze out a bit more damage from him, but this constellation synergizes with his C6 best, or if you are playing carry Kazuha. But for support Kazuha, this one is not as useful because you would want to spend more time using your main DPS instead. But in a quick swap team, this is nice to have. His C2, however, is the most insane constellation I've ever seen. On the support character, using Kazuha's ult will give himself a huge EM buff, which translates into more damage buff to your teammates and buffing his own reaction damage. And because Swirls got buffed, this is insanely strong. But there's more. Characters within the Animo field will also get a huge EM buff. It's literally broken because Kazuha is buffing both elemental damage and EM which are separate multipliers. This constellation basically says you can run Kazuha and Sucrose in one character slot. C3 and C5 gives you a bit more damage, pretty standard, and C6 is really interesting. After you use Kazuha's skill or ult, all of his attacks are converted into an emo, kind of like Xiao but with no energy restrictions. And for each point of EM you have on Kazuha, he gains some damage with his normal charge and plunge attacks. This number here looks small, but remember, he is sent with EM. He can literally casually double his damage. Plus his C1 and C2 feeds into this constellation, making it just that much more insane. So what does all of this mean? Well, Kazuha's best playstyle would be as a burst support or sub DPS, whichever term you prefer, because you would want to use his combo to deal some quick damage and switch your main DPS in most cases. Because his normal attacks are not animal, thus not boosted by artifacts without C6, so you could use Hongyun or Bennett to convert his attacks into other elements and play him as main DPS that way. Or if you have his C6, then at that point, carry Kazuha is definitely viable and very strong. I'll cover all of these build options in this video, so I got you covered. Now how does he stack up to other similar supports in the game right now? If we look at Jean, she can heal, which is valuable, but Kazuha does way more damage, swells 
spells a lot more times and buffs your team's damage as well. If we look at Sucrose, it starts to get interesting. Sucrose can share her own EM and hold the Thrilling Tails, which gives a massive attack buff and also generates a ton of Anemo Energy Particles. She can group enemies to some degree, but not really well. If we look at Kazua, he takes up more time on the field, but does more damage and buffs elemental damage instead of EM, which is better than Thrilling Tails, but actually not as good as sharing EM because EM is on a separate multiplier and you don't usually have a lot of it. C2 Kazuo gives you the best of both worlds though, and Sucrose can only work with reaction teams, while Kazuo can also work with pure elemental teams and freeze teams, so he is more flexible. Kazuo also does more damage and his CC is a little bit better. Now, is Kazuo actually better than Fenty? Well, just looking at numbers, Kazuha does more damage and swirl more times, but they actually fill different niches, and they're amazing at the respective niche. Fenty is amazing at grouping small enemies tightly, but kinda sucks against larger ones, because the AoE is quite small and they could just walk out of it. And the ult lifts everything into the air, which doesn't help melee characters at all. Though Venti refunds energy, and that in itself is amazing, and he's almost a must-have in ranged teams. Kazuo, on the other hand, buffs team damage, swells more times in his combo, but is worse in generating energy. He also takes more time to do his combo, so DPS is fairly equal at the end. Though Kazuo is much better when dealing with large enemies, because his AoE is huge, so enemies aren't running out of it. And his CC is good enough, plus he is much more compatible with melee characters. And if you think about it a bit more, Kazuo would work so well with the future Nezumi characters, but we will talk about team comms in just a bit. So if you think Kazuha would fit your team, then by all means go for it. But if you are thin on resources and already have Sucrose and or Fenty, they are similar and are reasonable substitutes. Now let's talk weapons. There's going to be more and more options as the game progresses. So if I don't mention a certain sword or a certain build, you can safely assume it's not very good. And as a small goldfish, I don't have access to all of the weapons. So I've done some math instead, which allows me to be not biased. And from that, I made a tool for you to compare every single sword at every refinement, but I'll get to that in just a bit. Harbinger of Dawn is a good option. Its only downside is that you lose its passive if you drop below 90% HP. So bring a shield or dodge like a god, which I can't. If you need energy, the Favonius Sword is great. The prototype Rancor is nice and free, and it's good for physical Kazua. And the base attack is decent to be used with support Kazua as well if you don't have a choice. The flute is in the same situation as the Rancor, and the effect scales with physical damage, which is alright. Its base stats are good in any build, but support Kazuha won't be able to use the passive. The Iron Sting is free and is actually quite good, because it has EM substats and it boosts both Kazuha's swell damage and team buff. The Black Cliff is a good option for carry Kazuha for some crit stats, but the passive is situational and support Kazuha will probably never be able to utilize it. The Black Sword is also great for some crit stats and is one of the best swords for carry Kazuha, though the passive isn't great for support build. The Ali Flash is an interesting one. It has the highest base attack amount of 4-star weapons, but a lower EM stat, allowing Kazuha himself to do more damage, but you do need to dodge like a god or have a strong shield, but this weapon has all of the stats he needs. The Lion's Roar is actually the highest DPS weapon between all of the 4-star swords, but only if you can maintain the passive effect. Your team will have to be applying either Pyro or Electro consistently to make this weapon work. And if that's the case, then this is arguably the best 4-star weapon you can use on both support and carry builds. The Skyward Blade is good in providing ER to keep Kazuha's ult charged, but it doesn't do much more than that. Its damage is quite bad and support Kazuha won't be using the blade's passive. And it's also bad for carry Kazuha because the stats on this are so low. Aquila Vifonia is the best weapon you can run on physical carry Kazuha. And although it's not the best for support builds, it's not bad. The Jade Cutter and Summit Shaper will provide you with so much offensive stats that make them the best offensive weapons for Kazuha, even in a support build. They simply give him so much stats, they're just ridiculously good. Though the Summit Shaper would require you to run a shield character, which restricts your team building. And now we have the Freedom Sworn. At first glance, this looks like a match made in heaven for Kazuha. EM substat, damage increase for Kazuo and himself, and a mark mechanic that can trigger off field and buffs your team's attack damage and attack percent? This is the best in slot weapon for support Kazuo, right? 
Well, its team buff can be triggered consistently only if you can keep Kazuo's ult charged all the time. And you are only receiving its buff less than 60% or even 50% of the time because you need at least one second to trigger it. So is this sword worth it? Here I have two charts that compare how much damage and team buffs each sword provides so you can tell exactly how good each weapon is. And they are posted on my Discord server. Link is in the pinned comment. But don't go there yet, because his artifacts aren't as straightforward as slapping four Venera pieces on him. I'll remind you about the charts later, so don't worry. By the way, come at your weapon of choice. Mine's Iron Sting, cause well... I don't really have a choice, do I? Now, if you're running Physical Kazuha, then 2 Pale Flame, 2 Bloodstained would be your best artifact option instead of 4 Pale Flame. Because his skill is only one single hit, and the plunge attack or ascension passive doesn't contribute to the stacks, making it really inconsistent. If you are going to run Chongyun and play main DPS Freeze Kazuha, then 4 Blizzard Strayer is the best because you can easily get the full benefit of the 4 piece effect. If you are going to run C6 Bennett and play main DPS Vaporize Kazuha, then 4 Crimson Witch would be the best because it boosts your pyro and reaction damage. For C6 Carry Kazuha, you have the option to go with 4 Venera or 2 Venera 2 Gladiator. And they're pretty much equal in terms of power, but 4 Venera has the added benefit of boosting your team's damage as well. So I would recommend that over 2 VV2 Glad. As for support Kazuha, you have 4 options, but I'll make it really simple for you. You might want to stack even more EM on Kazuha with 2 Wanderers set to Venera, but this is actually a bad idea because it translates into so little damage for your teammates through Kazuha's passive. It's not really worth it. The other options are 2 Venera 2 Gladiators and 2 Venera 2 Noblesse, which are good if you're running a double animal double geo comp. You could also use these in a double animal elemental team where your other animal support already has 4 Venera. And the 2 Venera 2 Glad is definitely better than the 2 Noblesse because a lot of Kazuha's damage is outside of his ult. But if you are looking for a universally good set, then 4 Venera is the way to go. The 4 piece effect is really good to provide resistance shred to your teammates, and the extra swirl damage could be essential to take your Kazuha to the next level if you build the most efficient artifact main stats and substats. And speaking of which, we will get into right now. You have some options here as well. And the last one on the list would maximize Kazuha's damage potential, but would require a bit more investments into him. You'll see what I mean. If you want a generally good build, then go with attack percent sands and an animal goblet no matter what playstyle you go with because Kazuha's own abilities ratios are too good to pass up on and you would want a crit circlet to round out the crit stat ratio. Substat wise, you would want to prioritize crit stats. Then, depending on your preferences, you can build enough ER to ult on cooldown. You would need around 160% or a bit more depending on how you manage energy or just go with attack percent. You won't be buffing your teammates much though, but it could be worth it depending on your team setup. On the other side of the spectrum, we have the triple EM build. This one maximizes Kazuha's damage buff, but sacrifices a lot of his own damage. Though swell damage compensates that a lot. You definitely want Kazuha to be at level 90 to maximize your swell damage if you go with this build. Substat wise, you can get EM in your flower and feather, then prioritize ER, crit stats, and then attack. You'll need to manage what elements you swell very well or run Kazuha in a pure elemental team for this to work. Now, if we meet in the middle, we can go with an EM, Animo EM setup. And you're not sacrificing Kazuha's damage entirely, but you're still building a really good amount of EM. Plus, you can get EM substats in your Animo Goblet anyways. This one is less risky, and I am running this myself right now. If you want a little bit more damage, you can use a crit circlet as well. Substat wise, it's exactly the same as the last build. EM wherever you can, then some ER, then crits, and then attack percent. I've listed quite a few options, but it's actually really simple. It comes down to whatever benefits your team the most and the amount of resources you're willing to commit to building him. But let's get into some team comps now. The last one I think is the best and it's 200 IQ. The first one would be this team with Deluk, Bennett, Xingqiu, and Kazuha. Pretty standard team, but Xingqiu's Hydro can mess up Kazuha's buff sometimes, which is not ideal. The next one is this Ganyu Melt team. Unfortunately, it is really finicky to get Kazuha to swell cryo and keep up the buff. And you really want both Kazuha and Sucrose's ults to be pyro infused instead of cryo because otherwise you're not applying pyro enough. 
but then Ganyu never gets the buff. You can see a trend here. Kazuo might not be the best as a support for Vaporize or Melt teams. But let's actually look at some teams that work really well. Here's an Electro Charge team. And I know Electro didn't get the buff they needed, but Kazuo can actually make this team much better. Because he would be able to apply his buff to both your Electro and Hydro characters. All of the reactions this team can do can absolutely stretch through everything, and this team would work even better if Kasua is at C2 or C6. But that's whale territory now. But Hushings, how about you tell us a team that works well with C0 Kasua? Alright, alright. You would definitely want to check out the national team. First, use Bandit EQ into Kazuha's combo, then Xing Chu's combo, and finish off with Xiangling's EQ, stacking all of the buffs onto Xiangling's ult. The Kazuha buff is more manageable in this team, and you can get it onto Xing Chu as well, which is really nice. But here is the team I think Kazuha belongs to. This is where he shines and flourishes, where he fits so perfectly that none of the other Animo characters can even compete. I am referring to the Ayaka Freeze team. But wait! I know Ayaka isn't out yet, but hear me out. Freeze teams want an Animo character to carry the 4 Venera set to boost their damage. But Sucrose doesn't do much damage, and her EM sharing is absolutely wasted. Jean is great, but we would rather have Diona because she generates way more energy, shields, and heals. And running two healers is a bit overkill. Fenty is great until he sucks everything 10 feet into the air, and Ayaka would need a long sword. But Kazuha is exactly what we need here. Just the right amount of CC, high burst damage to fill in downtimes, swirling cryo as easy as cake, which makes his elemental damage buff as consistent as it gets. Before Ayaka though, Kai is actually an amazing substitute, and you can even slot in Chongyun. Leave a like if you learned something new, remember to check out the weapons chart, and if you have any questions, ask me in the comments or your discord. Bye!